everybody is going to die. I have never met anyone who's not going to die. I've never met anyone who is of a certain age who's not already dead. It sucks. Now here's the evidence for why I don't believe in an afterlife. It would be a fine thing if you could, if I could have the capabilities athletically that I had when I was, say, 23, with the life experience and intellect that I have right now. It would be fantastic. And then live forever? I say bring it on. But my beloved grandmother, who was brilliant, uh, didn't have that happen. She faded away, losing her faculties as she went. People my age have a lot of grandparents and parents who are not as sharp, certainly not as athletically capable or physically capable as they were when they were younger. And so watching ourselves die is to me overwhelming evidence that there is no life after death. There's certainly no, doesn't seem to be any uh, reason to think that when you die, you go back to your optimum age at your optimum athletic ability and your optimum intellectual sharpness. And if it turns out that that's true, that you do die and have all this intellectual sharpness and athletic ability, cool, bring it on. That'll be great, but what would you do differently? What would you do differently if you knew for sure that you were gonna be immortal when you died somehow. Would you start committing crimes? Would you jump off a cliff so that you can hurry to your immortality optimal state? I just don't think so. Instead, the finite length of our life is what drives us, is what makes us go. And the, it's what makes you try to accomplish things or, or decide to have kids or not have kids or decide to live in another, on another, in another country, on another continent, or not. Or decide how to invest your money, or, or what you're gonna do with your resources. All this is driven by the, the limited length of life we have. So, furthermore, if evolution is in fact how the world works, and it absolutely sure seems to be from my point of view, the, one of the fundamental things about evolution that is so troubling is this whole idea of survival of the fittest. That's really a 19th century usage, a British usage of that expression, fit -est. It doesn't mean that you're able to do the most weightlifting or run the fastest 1500 meters or something. It means you fit in the best. And the troubling, troubling consequence of this is you don't have to be perfect or super person. You just have to be good enough from an evolutionary standpoint. You just have to be good enough to pass your genes on. After that, evolution, if it were an entity, doesn't really care about you, man. You had your kids, your genes are passed on and you expire. You lose your faculties as you run out of steam, and that's just how it is. Evolution, certain diseases catch up with you, certain autoimmune problems show up, certain viruses and bacteria, parasites get you. Nature doesn't care. You were good enough. And so I encourage you uh, to live your life as best you can every day.